Oh, I'm sorry. Um, the rules of engagement are to stay muted at all times. Um, if you do have a question or something, please raise your hand. Use the raise your hand icon or do one of these numbers and I'll see you and I will let Pastor know that you have a question. Uh, mm -hmm. Other than that, if you have activity in the background, please block your camera so that it's not distracting to anyone else. All yours, Pastor. All right, praise God. Can you hear me okay? All right, praise God. All right. First, let me uh, open up a prayer here. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, God, for this opportunity, Lord, to come together on this evening. I thank you, Lord, for keeping everyone safe throughout the day, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you'll continue with us even there in DC this evening hour, Lord. I pray, God, that your spirit would have free course among us, Lord. Bless us, Lord, to hear your word and what your spirit has to say to us, oh God. I thank you, Lord, for the ministry of reconciliation, Lord, and I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you will continually, Lord, give us knowledge, understanding, and wisdom, Lord, in how to live our lives, Lord, in this here untoward generation and all that you have called us to. Father, we thank you so much, God, for choosing us. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. So you can hear me okay, right? Right? Okay, now, Sister Marva, your, your computer is something that whatever you say, I don't know if it's just me or is it, does everybody else hear the pinging and, and the breaking up? Yeah, uh, I, I don't know what it might be, um, uh, uh, Sister Marva, but uh, it's, I'm not hearing anything. I'm not getting anything that you're saying. Um, but anyways, praise God. Can you hear me all right? So maybe if you can show me a picture and I'm talking about uh, Sister Marva and give me a thumbs up or something. Uh, I think she may be, she may have uh, disappeared for, for a moment. I think she went out to come back in. Yeah, okay. So praise God. So tonight, as you know, we've been we've been talking about evangelism and you know, and there's so much that we can talk about concerning uh, that ministry of uh, reconciliation that God has given to us. All right, Jesus Christ, He has reconciled us to God, and uh, when we have accepted and received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and being reconciled to God, well, we have a mandate, and that is that we are to win others to Christ, okay? So, you know, uh, one of the things that I think about, you know, a lot is, you know, when we talk about membership, you know, in, in, in a church, and um, I'll probably talk, because I, I think I'm getting a little ahead of myself here, uh, and I'll probably end up saying it again anyway. Um, but, you know, sometimes you have to wonder, you know, uh, about souls when you witness to souls. Um, if you're really winning them to Christ, if you're really winning them to Christ, because, you know, you can go to a number of people out there in the streets or whatever and stuff like that, ask them, do they believe in God? Say, yeah, they believe in God, but never step foot in a church, never open up a Bible or, or whatever, but they, yet they, they believe in God, okay? And consider themselves a member of the family, uh, the body of Christ. Um, you know, so anyways, you know, thinking about it and, and, and things is that, you, you get to this here place and, and which is, you know, uh, ironically true, okay, is, um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a shame that uh, membership, 
okay, for many churches, so it's not all churches, uh, the membership um, outnumbers the attendance. Hmm, kind of makes you think there a little bit, huh? Kind of makes you makes you think, say, well, you know, because if, if folks are truly, truly saved, well, truly converted, okay, the attendance shouldn't outnumber the membership. In other words, if you have 50 members in a church, when the church doors open, you should have 50 members. <laughs> you know, so, you know, I, I remember, you know, uh, um, some time ago, and I mean, nothing recently, but I, I wanted to know how many members there was, you know, in our church, and, you know, you know, kind of like a ballpark thing. And, um, and when I when I got the numbers, um, I said, wow, uh, I haven't seen that many people in attendance. So, you know, so, it, it, you know, the question, you know, arises that, you know, are we really saved? Are folks really being converted? You know, because again, if there has been a conversion, that means there has been a change. But if if people have heard uh, the gospel or what we considered to be the gospel, whatever we shared with them, and yet they turn around and they continue to live the lives they were living before we brought the message, whether it was uh, the message of the gospel or something that we conjured up to be the message of the gospel. See, because sometimes we say some things, you know, uh, to kind of candy coat things and make things sound good just to get somebody to attend a service or to get somebody to, uh, you know, a place to have the idea that, you know, now that you're here, you know, you might as well accept Christ. So that's a big concern, you know, of mine, you know, especially, you know, from, from a pastor's point of view to look out and say, hey, look, and I know we have like 150 members, but there's only 12 people here, <laughs> you know? So, you know, I thank God for all my brothers and sisters that, you know, attended services. And I know that sometimes that, you know, for one reason or another, you know, uh, could be vacation time or whatever and stuff like that. But for the most part, you know, uh, you don't always want to see attendance, uh, you know, a, a membership outnumbering attendance. So that's why I wanted to talk about, you know, the, um, not the idea, but uh, talk about, you know, what it means to be converted. It means, you know, you're going to have to give up some things. <laughs> you know, and I, I thank God because I, I, I knew that from the very start. I mean, one of the reasons why, you know, I didn't give my life to Christ a long time ago because I knew that I had to give up some things. But what I didn't know is that I couldn't do it alone. Okay, because for a long time, I stayed away from the church, even though it seemed like a good place, uh, you know, to go and, and to find change or, or help for my life. I, I believe that uh, the changes and, and, you know, the transformation that need to, needed to happen in my life, that I was the one that was solely responsible for that. Okay, that, and then I found out, no, I wasn't responsible for it at all. All right. The only thing that I had to do was present myself. Okay. Present myself. Oh man. And what a glorious day that was when I had that revelation, when I, when I got that understanding, knowing that, you know what, all I have to do is be present. All I have to do is present myself, you know? So, I mean, and then through the years, you know, and, and, and over time, you know, there's, there's a transformation that takes, you know, place in our lives and, and we begin to change, you know, spiritually. You know, in other words, we begin to change from the inside out. 
not from the outside, but from the inside out. God begins to start doing things and making all the adjustments and, and things that need to be done in our lives so that we, we could be uh, those that he has truly called, that, that have been truly converted, okay, that understand what it means to be converted, you know, so, you know, I think, I think about that because, you know, if we're going to do anything for God, okay, we can't look like the world, okay, we can't do like the world, okay, uh, we can't hold on to the things of the world, okay? We have to let go. We have to let go of things. And, and God helps us along the way and stuff because I know that there is, you know, a lot of things that are, you know, kind of difficult for uh, us to, you know, kind of let go on our own. But I believe this. If you have a heart that loves God, if you love God with all your mind, with all your heart, and with all your soul, God will make the adjustments. God will do what is necessary for you to have that strength, or he will provide what it is that is needed so that you'll be able to separate yourself from those things that uh, are, are blocking you from, from where God wants you to be. You know, even when it comes to like what I was talking about, you know, membership, outnumbering attendance and stuff. Some folks can't come, okay, or feel comfortable, all right, in, in the presence of the saints or in the church or whatever. They, they don't feel comfortable sometimes because they know that their life is uh, different than what God would have, what would have it to be, all right? First of all and foremost, I mean, we don't have to be be perfect or whatever and stuff like that. But what we have to do is that we have to, again, present ourselves, okay? And allow God to do the work that, that needs to be done in our lives. You know, I was coming across the scripture and stuff and I'll be looking at it in a little while. And it's, um, you know, uh, from the book of uh, First Kings uh, chapter 19. And, and it's about when um, Elisha, well, Elijah uh, had uh, put his mantle upon Elisha. And what this here was uh, signifying is that by the placing of that mantle on Elisha, uh, Elisha realized, okay, that it was almost like being anointed or ordained to do something, okay? To do something for God, okay? And so Elisha realized that. And, and when he realized that, uh, he asked Elisha, before anything else, can I go home and say goodbye to my family? And, um, you know, we have to realize that, you know, once we have given our lives to Christ, once we have, you know, been touched by God from that, from that point on, we, we have been uh, not only positioned, but we have a mandate. We have a calling, okay, on our lives. Some folks think that you can't do anything until you become, well, a deacon, or you have to be an evangelist, or you have to be an elder, or you have to be a pastor and stuff. No, from the moment that you give your life to Christ, the moment you present yourself, it's from that moment on, okay, we have a mandate. We, we have a position. We are holding, okay, a position that God has provided for us to walk in. So um, when we evangelize, we should attempt to convey three things to people about the decision that must be made in response to the gospel. See, because I think that what happens is that 
we, you know, uh, deliver the gospel, which is the good news. Yes, of course, it's the good news. But even though it's good news, we're, we're, we're not telling the whole truth. Okay? We're giving, you, we're giving the good news about what has been done and what is to come, but we're not talking about what it is that must be done on our part, okay? Um, you know, it makes me think of, uh, what is it? Um, Romans 12, one and two, where it talks about presenting yourself as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. It talks in about being transformed by the renewing of your mind. And we, we do that by presenting ourselves, okay, to God, okay? And when we do that, well, God will use us for his glory, especially in the, ad, in the area of evangelism. Like I said, we don't want to look like the world. We don't want to talk like the world. If the world is going to do anything or change, well, the world is going to have to see something different than what it is. Okay, I mean, one of the things that one of the reasons you know, I share with people sometimes is say, hey, look, you know what, I already know what's out there. I'm not going back out there. You know, I already know what's out there. I'm not going back out there. So when we evangelize, we should attempt to convey three things to people about the decision that must be made in response to the gospel. One, the decision is costly. It's going to cost something. It's gonna cost us something when we make that decision. When we make that decision, we're saying, Lord, the world behind me and the cross before me. We're putting the old life behind us. We're putting it behind us. Now, I'm not gonna say that things are not gonna, they don't, they don't pop up and I'm not going to tell that to somebody that once you have made that decision and stuff, you're not going to see or you're not going to feel certain things anymore or whatever. Say, so, yeah, they're going to come, but you have to keep your focus forward. You have, to, you have to continue to look forward. Keep your eyes on Christ. And two is that this decision is urgent. The decision is urgent because we don't know what a day may bring. We, we, I mean, you look at the world today and all the things that are happening in the world. I mean, I mean, it's, 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 it's crazy that every time you turn on the television, the news or something like that, there's a life that is lost. That was so unexpected. You know, I, I mean, every night, I mean, I, uh, last night itself, I, I came and I, I turned on it just to see the news and, and what was going to be happening with weather and stuff and, and, and the reports on the news. I mean, there was three deaths that didn't have to happen. See, because we don't know what's going to happen when we walk out the door of our homes. We don't know. And, and you know what? We don't even know what's going to happen while we're in our homes. You know, we, we don't know. We, we just don't know. But one thing we do know is that a relationship with Jesus Christ makes eternal life a sure thing for you and I. And that's the message we have to get to people. We have to get them to understand the good news. And we have to get them them to understand that there's a God pot and then there's a you pot. And I think that that's what's happening with so many in the world today. They've uh, got a hold of the God pot, but they forgot all about the you pot. You see, again, we accept the gospel. We hear the word. We understand that, you know, it's a uh, costly because we're going to have to give up some things. There's some things that, you know, we're just going to have to let go of. 
and we may not be able to let go of them right away or you know on our own entirely but god will help us as long as we love him with all our heart with all our soul with all our mind so the decision is costly so it must be carefully considered <laughs> when i when i think about carefully considered uh you know if you know we we approach someone and we tell them about the good news. And after we said a couple of words, they said, uh, yeah, I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. But you haven't heard the whole story. All right. So what you did is you just accepted something with merely no information. So people have to understand the gospel, the good news, and they have to understand the whole gospel meaning God's part, what he did, and what God expects us to do. You know, I was talking about Elijah a little bit earlier, and I, about him and Elisha. And, um, and I was talking about just a moment ago about, you know, uh, you know, the decision that we make in Christ is it's costly. It comes with a cost. We can't carry all our luggage. We can't bring everything with us. And we can't go back to where we came from. So near the end of Elijah's ministry, God told him to call Elisha to take his place. You know, when I thought about that, and I, you know, thought about the reason why Elijah had uh, went to find Elisha and put his mantle upon him. I, I thought about Jesus Christ. And I thought about him standing on the mount. And I thought about him saying, go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have. Hmm. Yes, sir. Whatever I have told you. And that was like the mantle. <laughs> that was like, that. what that was, that was Jesus commissioning us, okay? Jesus had did all that he had come to do, and now it was his time to send us forth. It was time for us to go forth. So again, near the end of Elijah's ministry, God told him to call Elijah, I mean, call Elisha, to take his place. All right, 1 Kings 19, 19 to 21 says, so he departed thence and found Elijah, the son of Shaphat, who was plowing with 12 yoke of oxen before him, and he with the 12. And Elijah passed by him and cast his mantle upon him. And he left the oxen and ran after Elijah and said, let me, I pray thee, kiss my father and my mother, and then I will follow thee. Mm -hmm. See, because like I said earlier, see, uh, Elisha knew what the meaning was when Elijah threw his mantle upon him, okay? He realized that he, he had been commissioned. <laughs> Okay, he realized that he had just been given a task that he had work to do, that he had he had work to do for God. And he said, let me, I pray thee, kiss my father and my mother, and then I will follow thee. And he returned back. Wait a minute. And then I will follow thee. And then he said unto him, go back again. For what have I done? done to thee. And he returned back from him and took a yoke of oxen and slew them and boiled their flesh with the instruments of the oxen and gave unto the people and they did eat. Then he arose and went after Elijah and ministered unto him. So 
after Elijah done all that he thought, you know, was good and what was the acceptable thing to do, then he followed Elijah. Says that Elijah had said to Elisha, when he asked about going back to kiss his father, kiss his mother, and, and so forth, he said, he said, what have I done to you? What have I done unto thee? Now, um, it wasn't as if um, he was um, saying anything as if he had done something wrong to him or whatever uh, to ask such a question, but it was kind of like a rhetorical thing, I believe, where, uh, you know, Elijah was looking for uh, a, a, a response uh, to that question that he asked, uh, what have I done to thee? Mm, how would I say this? In other words, it was more or less meant to be kind of like a rebuke, a disapproval, but at the same time, allowing Elijah to make the choice for himself. So it says that Elisha did go back to kiss his father, kiss his mother, and uh, prepared this meal and everything. And they had a party, I guess, or whatever and stuff. And then it says, then he followed Elijah. So when I thought about that, you know, because the connection here is that I'm going to go to the New Testament and uh, in, in, in the book of Luke. Uh, to kind of connect with this. But the thing is, is that when I thought about it, I said, you know, how, how many times, um, you know, when it comes to, you know, doing something um, that we know, okay, is the will of God. Like evangelize or uh be joined together with, with other ministry members and, and, you know, to outreach, to give of our time and give of ourselves, even if it's our finances or whatever and stuff like that. You know, how many times, you know, can, you know, has it been that we, we could find, you know, an excuse to do something else uh, instead of that? Um, we can... Um, you know, find ourselves, uh, you know, uh, uh, kind of, you know, working things in our minds that that kind of make it seem like, you know, it's it's all right thing to do, uh, to do something other than giving my time, uh, you know, to some something that I, that, that you know that, I mean, it's biblical that God has called us to do because it says that he has called us to the ministry of reconciliation. And in order to reconcile people to God, they must hear the gospel. They have to hear the gospel and then they have to respond to the gospel and they're not going to hear it or they're not even going to see the gospel if we don't let them hear the gospel through not only our words, but hear it through the manner in which we live, all right? But if we're absent, you know what? No, nobody, nobody's going to see that. Now, I'm not coming down on the church because we have some good brothers and sisters in Gospel Tabernacle, and I know, I know that you're telling folks about Jesus Christ. But I want to encourage us to be careful how we share the gospel because we want to let people know that it's not just Yes, I do. And then that's it. You're done. Yes, I do. I'm done. <laughs> no, it's not that. See, because that's what's happening. People are saying yes to Jesus Christ. And once they say yes to Jesus Christ, they say, I'm done. You know, no, you're not done. <laughs> no, you're, you're, you're not done. You have to, we have to get people to understand that once uh, we have given our lives to Christ, Okay, uh, what we do is we submit ourselves, all right, to Jesus Christ. We submit ourselves 
to the gospel. We submit ourselves to the ministry of reconciliation. It becomes uh, our life, our new life, what we do. Glory to God. So, um, you know, so we want to, we want, we want to get people to understand that it's not just giving your life to Christ and then you're done, you know, because that's what happens is that people, uh, you know, like you see here, we see Elijah and we'll see in the book of Luke where I share a few verses of scripture uh, with you concerning uh, that same question somewhat being asked to Jesus Christ when he talks about someone following him. See, the thing is, is that, you know, uh, people, uh, unlike what we have here, Elijah, where it says that, okay, he went home, he did what he had to do, and then it says, and then he followed Jesus. I mean, then he followed Elijah. But when we look at, you know, a lot of people in the world today that have came and have given their lives to Christ, they said yes to Jesus, and they said, okay, but let me return and, and take care of uh, this and that, but they, but they never got back. They, they they never go back. See, that's the problem, you see, because they don't know how crucial it is, okay, to go and not come back. You know, they don't know how crucial it is to go at all. They don't know how crucial it is to stay and stand still in the grace in what you have just found and received. They don't, they don't know that. Okay. So, you know, we think about, you know, people, like I said, is, is, you know, and, and again, you know, I can't help but to keep on going back to that. It's back to this here. It's a shame that many churches, if not all, okay, that uh, the membership outnumbers the attendance. That, that tells us something right there. Either they haven't really heard the gospel, or maybe they have really heard the gospel, but they haven't really been saved. You know, I mean, even in the book of Hebrews, it talks about forsake not the assembly of yourself with the saints as the manner of some is. In other words, don't be like where you came from, <laughs> okay? Don't, don't be like that crowd that is still out there that has not come, all right, and giving themselves wholeheartedly to the Lord, okay? Now, and, 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 you know, and, and the thing is, is like I said earlier, we have to get people to also to understand and stuff is that, you know, don't have the, the misconception that uh, all the labor, all the work for the transformation is laid upon you yourself, that it's what you have to do. No, it's what God does, okay? But we have to present ourselves, okay? We have to present ourselves. So, you know, uh, the message, you know, in uh, evangelizing, um, what did I do with that there? Yeah, the message in evangelizing, all right, has to be, you know, delivered in such a way where people understand that there's a God part and there's a you, you part, all right? So praise God. So Luke 9, 61 to 62. And this is somewhat like what I was talking about, Elijah, where it talks about one looking back because that's what happened in Elijah right there. It said the mantle was put upon Elisha. This was a calling for him into ministry, yet he looked back. Luke 9, 61, 62, it says, and another also said, Lord, I will follow thee, but <laughs> oh, man, but that big gigantic word, but you know, I mean, you know, you can you could ask 
you know, folks to do something sometimes. But I'll tell you what, the minute that but comes behind it, yeah, okay, no problem. You know, I see you, we'll be there. But it's like the whole thing changes, okay? You know, uh, that, that but could be a terrible thing to hear uh, when you're trying to do anything, you know, and you're looking for assistance or you're, or you're just looking for somebody to be with you or to go with you or, or, or to do, you know, what it is that you need him to do. And I'm not talking about just me, but I'm talking about the Lord. Yes, I'll follow the Lord. That's what he said to the Lord. He said, I'll follow you, Lord, but, <laughs> and there shouldn't be any buts when it comes to the ministry of the gospel of Jesus Christ. There shouldn't, there shouldn't be any, any, any buts, you know? So it says, uh, and another said also, another, another also said, Lord, I will follow thee, but let me first go bid them farewell, which are at home at my house. And Jesus said unto him, all right, now, now Jesus had a different response than Elijah. <laughs> you know, you know, yeah, he had a different response than Elijah. You see, because Elijah could have said the same thing to Elisha. And uh, that might have changed Elisha's decision, okay? It might have changed his decision. But you see what Jesus said, it says, all right, uh, he says, um, uh, uh, he says, uh, but, but first, uh, let me uh, go bid them farewell, which are at home at my house. And, and Jesus said unto him, no man having put his hand to the plow, and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. It says no man looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. Hmm. I don't know how that comes by you, all right? Uh, no man looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. Myself, I said earlier and stuff, there's, there's nothing back there for me. There's, there's, there's nothing back where I came from for me. God has been good to me and it is such a blessing, okay? to have the peace that I have today. It is such a blessing to know that I have a home that is prepared for me in heaven. It is such a blessing for me that I know that I have a God that is God with me on this side and that God, that same God will be with me on the other side, okay? It's such a blessing to know that Jesus Christ's work was not done in vain. It is such a blessing to know and to know it in your heart that when God sent him, and this is the message we got to get to people because we stood in condemnation, but when God sent Jesus Christ to die for us, okay, he did not send him to condemn us. No, he didn't send him. I mean, we should have been condemned. We should not have been uh, uh, given the grace because we've done nothing to earn it. To, we, ha we have nothing to give that, that would even uh, come close to, to a mountain, you know, to, to a mountain, to, to a place of even coming close to repaying for what God has done for us. You know, but Jesus Christ says that Jesus Christ didn't come to condemn us, but to save us. Yeah. And this is what we have to get to our brothers and sisters in Christ. We have to get them to understand, you see, because they look, all right, they look at the church. They look at God and they look at Jesus Christ. Okay, they look at all of this here and they, they say, this is the enemy. <laughs> because because they they look at all the things that they believe that that they 
that they can't do because everything is spoken against that that they do the the things in their lives and stuff but you know what god wants you to come even with those things okay and he wants to help you he wants to help you he wants to transform your life glory to god don't be discouraged because you're carrying a heavy load and it's so difficult or hard for you to even imagine being able uh, to, to, to loose yourself from things because that's not your responsibility. You have to leave those results up to God. That's the message we have to give to people to let them know that God, <laughs> it is him that does it. Glory to God. Jesus said, come on to me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I believe that's one of the first scriptures that I grabbed a hold of when the ministers was preaching from a place in the Bible that, that, that spoke about Jesus Christ, okay, taking my burdens, carrying all my cares. I mean, you know, we got to get people to understand that, but then we also got to get them to understand that you have to stay connected. Glory to God, because when you disconnect, glory to God, well, you disconnect and you end up on your own again. You end up all by yourself and on your own again. Thank you, Jesus. And not only on your own again, but you get to a place where you're not fit for what God has prepared for you. Ain't that something? Jesus Christ came and did all this here work for you and I. Myself, your unsaved family, my unsaved family, my unsaved friends, you know, your unsaved friends, my co-workers. Jesus Christ came to do all the things that he done, okay? And the price that he paid, did, did all of that, all right? so that we <laughs> would receive his kingdom, the kingdom of God, did all of that. And then after all that he did, I don't want it to be said that I am not fit for the kingdom because I continue to look back. Or I went back believing that I was going back for a moment and, and never returned. You see, and that's what's happening. We have to, we have to get our people to know that uh, have, I mean, because I'm sure that you know some folks, you know some folks that gave their life to Christ, right? And yet you don't see them in the church and haven't seen them in the church, have you? Well, we need to tell them, okay, uh, that, uh, you know, uh, they're um, in a place where uh, their policy with God, all right, is null and void. <laughs> okay? All right? Because what it is, is that there's no relationship. Okay? Because what you did is you accepted Jesus Christ and you went back out in the world and that's who you hang with. That's who you... You, you, you hang with, that's who you uh, party with or whatever you do with them and stuff. You spend more time with them than you spend with God. And get people to know, you know, you got to start somewhere. You know, I remember telling somebody one time, I said, you know, they was talking about how difficult it is. He said, look, you know what? Just, just come on Sunday. Certainly, you want to get them to a place where they're coming, you know, every time the church doors are open, but you know what? Come on. People are, are newly saved or newly being introduced to Christ. And, and it's hard for them to understand or to even think that they even have the spiritual strength to attend every service. So, so, so you tell, hey, look, you know, just, just come on Sunday. You know, come on Sunday, because that's how I started. I came on Sunday for a while. Next thing you know, I was there Wednesday. Next thing you know, I was there Friday. Next thing you know, I was there for revivals. Next thing I know, I was there for anniversaries. And not only that, next thing I know, I wasn't even in our churches. I was in somebody else's church for an anniversary. And I was in somebody else's church for a revival. 
You know, I mean, it, it was it was church. It was pretty much church all the time. And I'm not saying that that's what you have to be, but that's what happened to me. Okay, I didn't I didn't just take the plunge and and everything jumped into place like that right away. No, it was I started with that first day. So. So Elijah, it says, found uh, Elisha plowing, uh, plowing a field with 12, 12 yoke of oxen and placed his mantle upon Elisha. Elisha, knowing the meaning of the mantle being put on him, asked permission to say goodbye to his parents. With Elijah's permission, Elisha sacrificed the oxen, boiled the flesh, and threw a party for the people. Only then did Elisha follow Elijah. It was after all of that. And we say, okay, we say we can do that thing that needs to be done later. A lot of times in our lives, we, we, we have something that we know that needs to be done, okay? And um, when it comes, when it's between uh, what we feel like doing or what we want to do and then the things that needs to be done and i'm talking about in our natural life and the thing that needs to be done that we know that needs to be done because we favor the other thing over the thing that needs to be done we say that we can do the thing that needs to be done later <laughs> we we you know that's what we do well i mean we do it all the time you know what i mean i mean it's just like for instance i mean dishes in the sink there's some dishes in the sink you know what i mean and, you know, a lot of times, you know, I, I do the dishes and sometimes I'll tell my wife, don't worry about it. I got the dishes and stuff. And guess what? Sometimes they're there the next day. <laughs> you know why? Because I know what needed to be done and stuff. But somewhere I found that there was something else that I wanted to do. And I said, you know what? Uh, I, I can do that later. And it's the same way with uh, our relationship with God. Okay. We know where we need to be and what we need to do in our spiritual life. But then there's just here reason in our minds that says, you know what, I can do that later. <laughs> Even with prayer, you know, oh yeah, I can do that later. You know, uh, there's, uh, you know, people sometimes say to you, say, hey, you know, uh, can you pray for me? He said, uh, and then you walk away from me and say, yeah, okay, I'll pray for you. And, uh, you know, I'll be praying for, I'll be praying for you. You know? And you're standing right there in their presence, right right there in their presence, right there. And they say, pray for me. Said, yeah, I'm going to be praying for you. <laughs> That's it. How many know that about a half an hour from there, you kind of forget to pray? <laughs> you kind of forget to pray for them, don't you? Yeah. Uh, in the middle of the night, you're laying in bed and you think about it and stuff. And boy, are you tired. And and and, and you're laying in bed and you it comes to mind. You said, oh, yeah, so, so. they asked me to pray for them. Oh, I didn't pray for them. And you say, Lord, help them. <laughs> you see, because, you know, because you have to justify, okay, all right, you have to justify that commitment that you made. It's always easier to say, okay, yeah, well, I, I know it's important, but okay, I'll do that later. And that's what's happening with a lot of people today and stuff like that. Some people are not coming to church. You can tell them, hey, look, it, let's come to church. Let's be in the presence of God where God wants us to be because God doesn't want us to forsake the assembly of ourselves together. It's a very important thing uh, for us to, you know, uh, to do is to be together in unity, being of one accord and one mind in the presence of God, praising and worshiping him. You know, um, it's it's an important thing for us to be together in that they're set and so and getting them to understand that and so because you see uh you know uh many people say you know hey look you know uh yeah i i, I know i need to go to church and stuff like that but i'll, I'll do I'll, i can do that later but later might not come see that's that's why we have to explain to people that you know there's a god pot yet yeah, god will give you the salvation but the word of God also says you have to work it out. 
you have to work out that salvation. Okay. In other words, you have to, you have to walk in the things of God, in the commandments of God. You have to walk in what uh, God expects of you, what God expects of us. Okay. Now, none of us is perfect. I mean, we all fall short here or there and stuff like that, but let that not be an excuse to continue to do so. You know, let's, let's not, I mean, when we see our fault, let's not uh, 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 allow it uh, to be a place where, uh, you know, a, a place where we decide to stay, you know, in that their fault, you know, because, you know, I mean, I don't know, I, you know, over the years, I heard so many people, you know, where they will say, Oh, you know, I got my faults, <laughs> you know, and, and, and they can mess around and do the same thing over again, the same exact thing. And the thing that comes out of their mouth, oh, you know, I got my faults. No, 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 no. See, that's not what God expects us to do. God, God wants us to see our faults and he wants us to correct them. He wants us to bring him our faults and ask him, okay? to help us. So evangelism is, you know, preaching the gospel, preaching the gospel in such a way that people understand that there's a God part and a you part. Preaching the gospel uh, to the point where there's true conversion that happens. You see, because if you're still living in the world according to the course of the world, there has not been any conversion. Okay? There, there has not been any conversion. Okay? Because what you did is you took a step in and then you look back and you took a step out. Okay? So, you know, we, 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 we want people to understand, you know, the whole truth about salvation. So besides turning back to our old ways, there's the sin of inconsistency. An example of the sin of inconsistency is when Peter confessed that he would never be offended in Jesus. Do you remember that? The sin of inconsistency. In inconsistency. When, when Peter had told Jesus that, oh no, I'll, I'll never be offended in you, Lord. This is what it says in Matthew 26, 33, 35. Peter answered and said unto him, Though all men shall be offended because of thee, yet will I never be offended. Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, that this night before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. Peter said unto him, Though I should die with thee, yet will I not deny thee. Likewise also said all the disciples. Boy, were they proven wrong. <laughs> because when the heat got up, <laughs> when the heat was turned up, oh man, a relationship with Jesus Christ was out the window. Who, me? I don't know him. Let us never get to the place of where Jesus has called us to this ministry of rec uh, reconciliation. Let us never get to the place where it comes to evangelizing, where we choose the popular thing uh, over evangelizing. Uh, you know, telling somebody about Jesus Christ. Let us not get to a place where, you know, we choose uh, to do other than what we have been called to do. Glory to God. Anybody have anything to say? We'll get ready. We're getting, whoa, we're winding down here. We're, we're like at 8.06. I appreciate you all for being here tonight. Pastor. Yes. 
Yeah. When you, the last, the last, the last, yeah, last, yeah, I have 33 to 35, but what, what, um, chapter? What, oh, uh, yeah. I said Matthew. I said, I, I thought I said Matthew. Matthew 26, 33 to 35. 26. Thank you. Matthew 26, 33 to 35. Praise God. Yeah. Yeah, we, 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 we say that we, we're, we're going to tell somebody about Jesus and, uh, you know, we're going to tell folks about Jesus and then when it's uncomfortable, uh, we decide not to do so. But it's not always going to be comfortable. In fact, I believe that if you find it uh, being really comfortable at times, you know, something may be uh, a little wrong because, you know, uh, it's, it's not, you know, um, always easy, all right, to go into the circle sometimes, especially in the circle that you may believe, or maybe it might be true that you're not wanted, or your God is not wanted, or nobody really wants to hear it. Okay? So, you know, um, you know, the, uh, you know, Peter in, in, in denying uh, Jesus Christ, okay, it was like when it got really hot, and it was uncomfortable. He denied Jesus Christ. And some folks have denied Jesus Christ simply because of what the world uh, calls popular, yeah. what the popular thing is to do. Okay? Right. So mm -hmm. saying no to Christ because saying yes to Christ isn't the popular thing to do. In other words, if I say yes to Christ, I'm going to lose some friends. If I if I if I say yes to Christ, uh, the conversation's going to end. If I say if I say yes to Christ, they they won't invite me anymore. You know, and 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 and, and that's all right. You see, because, you know, when we live a life where we don't care about the world in the sense that, you know, we need to have a part in the world or with people that are living according to the course of this here world, okay? You know what? When we get to a place where that doesn't matter to us, you know what? Guess what? Somebody else will see it and it won't matter to them either. Uh-huh. So you see, when, when, when people see you being able to stand your ground, glory to God. Oh, man, I'm telling you, it does something. Because let me tell you something, not just the gospel in words, but living the gospel is contagious. Okay, because the thing is, I couldn't have what I have in me as far as the gospel, the salvation that I have, the walk in Christ that I have, if I hadn't seen it displayed before me. I've been in the world a long time, and let me tell you something. I heard a lot of people talk a whole lot of stuff that meant nothing. Didn't live up to what they was talking about or whatever. I mean, that's my whole life. I mean, before Christ, that is. So... We have to be an example before people. We have to be an example and be an example first and foremost, all right? I didn't get too far from where I wanted. I didn't get as far as I wanted to get uh, about some things, but hey, look, I got three more. I got, well, two more tries anyway. Uh, but anyway, so, you know, be an example, one of the most important things that you'll do in being an example is not looking back. One of the most important things that we can do 
in being an example. All right, representing God, representing the Lord Jesus Christ, living the gospel out. One of the most important things that we can do is not look back, not go back. And you know, and I, and I, you know, I've said this here uh, to people before and stuff is that, uh, one of the reasons, if I had to think of a reason why I wouldn't go back, what well, you about the things that I know and 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 uh, where I came from and and things is that um, I I truly believe with with all my being that I would never make it back. I I I I, I wouldn't even try. I wouldn't even play around. I wouldn't even touch anything back there. Nope, it's done. It's gone, okay? And every family member and every friend, you know, that uh, disagrees with my life in Christ and rather not have part in it, well, I love you. And you know what? And if you ever need my help, okay? And I'm not talking about help where you need some money or whatever and stuff like that, but I'm talking about on a spiritual basis. If you ever need my help, I'll be there. You know, if I can do something for somebody that can uh, position them in a place to receive the gospel of Jesus Christ, I'll do it. Okay. But again, like I said, the most important thing that we can do in our walk with God, walking out this gospel. This gospel of Jesus Christ is not looking back, just always looking forward, straight ahead, straight ahead, always looking forward. Thank you, Jesus. Does anyone have any questions for Pastor? No question, but a comment. Mm -hmm. uh, I, when you were talking, Pastor, you said looking straight ahead, no turning back. It remind me of this old chorus. It says the the world before me, uh, the cross before me, and the world behind me. No turning back. Oh yeah, I remember that. There's no turning back. Yeah, there's no there's no turning back. You see, but you know, and and, and when you brought that up, that's one of the things that I, I was trying to uh, you know put out there about, you know, there's many people that have said yes to Jesus Christ that have came into gospel tabernacle. Some of them are your family members. Some of them are friends that, 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 you know, some of them are, are friends and family members that I know. All right. Am I okay. And what they did is what they did is they came to matter of fact, one of them just came to mind and, and I was thinking about my cousin, Joe, he's going through a difficult time in his life, came in, sat through the service, at the end, he gave his life to Christ. That was the first and last time that I'd seen him in the church. But every time I have an opportunity to see him somewhere on the street, I remind him. Okay? So, I, you know, we have to get people to understand that thing that I was talking about, that there's a God part and there's a you part. You know, God's part is to call you out, and then your part is not to go back. But look, but 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 look straight ahead, look forward, and, and and receive what God what God has for you. You know, so uh, you know, as I said earlier about you know uh, it costing you something, giving your life to Christ, it's going to cost you something. Okay, first of all, it's going to cost you some time because you're going to have to spend some time with God. You're going to have to come out of the nightclub. You're going to have to stop hanging with your buddies at times when, you know, the church is in the full swing of things with Jesus is, you know, doing what he does in the midst of the saints. It's going to be, it's going to be, uh, you know, you, you, you have to uh, break away from those things, you know, 
Now, I'm not saying that, you know, uh, we uh, break away from our friends or family and stuff and we never return in a sense we, I mean, because how else will they ever, you know, hear or understand or, or receive the gospel, okay? You know, I remember, um, and, and this, and, and there's just quite a few people that have this here, <laughs> um, terrible testimony, okay, with other people. I mean, there's people that I've talked about, about, you know, being, you know, in church or whatever and stuff like that. And there's people out in the world who will say, ah, really? <laughs> Get out of here. Yeah. You know? No. Uh, oh, yeah, right. Okay. Yeah, that one. Yeah, I know all about that one. You know? And and, and that's not that's not the kind of report that, that you want. You know? That, that's not the kind of report you want, you know. And, um, you know, I'm not going to mention the name off the pot, but there's a certain person that even in our church, you probably already know and stuff, but I mean, when, when, once you mention uh, a name, you know, in, connected with, in connection with this here person, uh, immediately, uh, whoever uh, is hearing it, will say, oh yeah, <laughs> that person is sure connected to God. <laughs> you know, that's the testimony that you want. People, you know, that, that look at you and say, you know what, uh, what, who they say they are, they are. When we talk about being a Christian, when we're talking about being in Christ, you know, you want, you want people to have that testimony. If anybody's Gonna have a testimony about you. It's the, let, let them not, don't let them have a don't let them have a bad one. Uh, let let them let them be able to say that. Yeah, uh, that was somebody that sold out for Jesus Christ. You know, somebody that sold out for Jesus Christ. And like I said, you know what? The gospel's contagious. It's not just by the words. It's not just by what we say, but it's about the testimony in the way that we live. You know. It, as the Bible talks about it, it says it says uh, of the conversation, the manner in which we live. All right, let's not you know have our lips saying one thing and our lives saying another. You know, so uh, it's all about not looking back. Pastor, Sister Rochelle has a question. Go ahead. It's not really a question, it's a comment. Um, when my, we had the service for my, for my mother at the church. Wow. Um, I had, I don't know if it was Pastor Marilyn, Pastor Ray, whoever. I had them um, ask anyone if they wanted to give their life to the Lord. And I was simply surprised at how many members of my family raised their hand and, and went up and were saved. Um, and I don't think I've seen any of them at the church since, yeah. you know, so, so I understand what you're saying. And I've talked to several of them. Mm -hmm. I, we have a family reunion at the end of September and I'm, mm -hmm. I'm going to talk to them again and see how many of them actually go to church. Mm -hmm. I've talked to one cousin who told me, um, she reads the Bible and she prays. She doesn't need to go to church have a conversation with her too yeah but yeah, yeah it, it makes me uh just remember that day in that way where a lot of people said that they would and i don't think they have yeah yeah so like i said earlier you know um you know a lot of people have said i do and then they said i'm done <laughs> and, and 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 that's not it it's not I do and I'm done, okay? I remember, it reminds me of Bishop Ferraro one day. I was at a service at his, uh, at his church and there was a bishop there. And the bishop, matter of fact, I knew this here bishop because he's a very good friend of my family's for many years since there was kids. And he had got up and, and he had started explaining. He said, you know, um, you know, um, you know, Bishop so-and-so, he said, um, can't remember his name off here, but anyways, 
he said, you know, he was bishop, so so, and then how he had recently retired. So, you know, everybody's like, oh, you know, praise God, he retired. And Bishop Ferrara got up behind him and said, uh, if you're not dead, you're not done. <laughs> And that's what people have to understand once you're giving your life to Christ. Glory to God. You know, it's not I do and then I'm done. No, if you're dead, you're done. <laughs> you know? But while you're living, okay, God expects us, okay, to be in his presence, joined together as a body of Christ, okay? All right, being of one mind and one accord, praising God at every opportunity that is given us to be in his presence. He wants us together. God has created us, all right, to need and, 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 and to pull from one another, okay, to be together and to encourage one another and to love one another, you know. So, you know, God never intended for somebody to grab a hold of the gospel and then say, you know, I read my Bible, I pray and stuff like that. I don't have to go to church. I just do everything alone. God didn't call you to be alone. Okay. He, I mean, from the very beginning, when Adam was alone, he said, I see that he was alone and I knew that he needed somebody. Okay. So he made him a help me. Right. So, I mean, from the very beginning, God's said it's not good that man should be alone okay all right so you know uh so god i mean i mean even from looking from back then it's the same thing today god wants us to be together so when you come to the church and when you when you give your life to christ wherever you've given your life to christ or if you find somewhere else you have to find a home you know, we have to get people to understand, you have to find a home. So I thank God for tonight. And, um, you know, my, my notes are pretty much all over the place here. And I, I went here and there and stuff. I just pray to God that uh, we, we got something out of uh, what we talked about tonight. Uh, you know, especially about the scriptures that we went over, because mainly what I wanted to bring out is that, you know, uh, uh, you know, a, a relationship with Jesus Christ, first of all, it, it's going to cost you something. You're going to have to turn away from some things and stuff. And it's not entire, and it's not for you to believe that, you know, you have uh, that entire burden on yourself as far as uh, 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 relieving yourself of the things that that you, you, you must be rid of in order to be fit for the kingdom of God. Not taking that upon yourself as if, you know, like you're the one that has to do this here work. No, knowing beyond a shadow of a doubt that God has come, that Jesus Christ has come to do the work in you, but he can't do it if you're not uh, 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 present. You have to be present. You can't be somewhere else, glory to God, when God is looking for you to be in another place. OK, so and when I talk about a place, I'm not talking about simply a physical place, but a spiritual place. OK, you know, being in a spiritual place and stuff. And I'm talking about, you know, having that connection, uh, not just spiritually with God, but with his people, with the saints of God being joined together. OK, whenever the house of God, whenever those doors are open. All right, as the Bible says, forsaking not the assembly of yourself with the saints. We have to get people to know that, okay? All right, and because if you're forsaking the assembly of yourself with the saints, you're not really saved. You're not really converted. I feel comfortable saying that. Some of us, well, how can you say that then? Because there's been no conversion. Okay, you have to be converted. You have to be changed, okay? That's what the gospel is all about. It's about transforming us, making us new creatures in Christ Jesus, okay? All things are passed away and all things become new. I didn't know church, but I know church now, okay? This is what it is. This is what it's about, all right? Sacrificing, 
a little bit of your time. I mean, we spend hours and hours and hours and stuff doing everything else and stuff like that. But when it comes to spending an hour and a half, two and a half hours just on one day to come to the house of God, to give him praise, okay, and to give him thanks, we find that we just don't have the time. Why? Because we're too busy looking back. Praise God. All right. God bless you. All Pastor, right. yeah. before you close, before you do closing prayer, can you include in the prayer Sister Rolling, Sister Tink? She got a call saying that she was uh well, she's going to the hospital, Sister Rolling. So Sister Robin. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, she, she's um she's in the emergency room now. Um she called me during during the beginning of uh Bible study. What's going on with her? She just said she can't move her left side. She's in a lot of pain. Mm -hmm. And they're not sure what's going on. Who? Oh. Okay. And then when you close us out, Pastor, you just close us out. I was listening to another prayer request my wife was giving me. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So, all right. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you so much, God, for your grace and for your mercy. We thank you, Lord, for all that you have provided through the atonement of Jesus Christ. Father, we believe your report. It says he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities and the chastisement of our peace was upon him and by his stripes we are healed. We believe your report, Lord, that says that you are healer. We believe your report that says that you are a very, very present help in our time of need. So Father, right now, Lord, we look to the hills, Lord, from whence cometh our help. And Father, we ask, Lord, on tonight that you remember Robin that you remember, Sister Rowling, Sister on tonight, you know what's happening in her body right now, Lord. You know everything that's going on in her mind and in her heart, the thoughts that she's thinking right now, Father. You know all about it. I pray, Lord, that you would bring comfort and peace, Lord, and I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you will let her know, Lord, that you are ever-present God, that you are as close as the words in her mouth, that if she would just call upon you, Lord, with her whole heart, Look for you, God. She will find you, God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, that as she does this here, God, that you would enter into her innermost being. Cause those things that are not functioning in the way that they should to function properly. Whatever it is, Lord, that is causing this affliction, Lord, we come to you and we ask, Lord, that you help her right now. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the privilege to be able to come to you in prayer. And believe, Lord, as we ask, Lord, we shall also receive, because we ask in faith. So, Father, as I have asked in faith, I pray, God, that you would give our sister Robin faith enough to believe that, God, that you are able, that you are able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all we ask, oh God. So, Father, I thank you right now, and I pray, God, for Iona today. Father, you know who it is that I'm talking about right now. My sister-in-law, sister-in-law, <laughs> praise God, you know, you know exactly who it is. I Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, I pray, Lord, that you would help her right now. I pray, Lord, that you would move upon her body right now. I pray, God, that you would bring forth healing right now. I know her, Lord, to be a believer. And I know her, Lord, to be someone, Lord, that trusts in prayer. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray, Lord, that you would move by your spirit right now, Lord, in her presence, O oh God. Give her peace in her heart and her mind. Give her a touch, O oh God. Give her the assurance, Lord, that you are present right now and that everything, Lord, is in your hands. Father, I pray, Lord, for those in the medical field, Lord, that are handing, Lord, the things that is necessary for her right now. I pray, Lord, that you would give them knowledge, understanding, and wisdom, Lord. Guide them, Lord, as only you can. Help them, Lord, to make the right decisions, Lord, in her care tonight. Have your way in Jesus' name. So, Father, also I ask, Lord, for all those that are here that are present tonight in this Bible study, I pray, Lord, that you would bless each and every one of us 
to be a better example, Lord, for you, to this unto our generation. An example, Lord, of the gospel of Jesus Christ, not just by our words, Lord, but in the manner in which we live. I pray, God, that you would bring those souls, Lord, that have once said yes to you. Bring them into the house of God. Give them a hunger and a thirst, Lord, glory to God, to be amongst your people and amongst and in the midst of you. Father, I thank you right now for all that you have done in my life and in the lives of my brothers and sisters under the sound of my voice right now. And I believe, Lord, that you're not done with us, that you have a whole lot of more work to do, Lord, in us, oh God. But I also know that it's good. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, have your way in our lives. Again, Lord, bless us. Bless Gospel Tabernacle Outreach Ministries. Bless those that are not present tonight. Bless those, Lord, that are traveling, Lord, wherever they are, Lord. Put a hedge of protection around them. Keep them safe from harm and danger. Let them not be the result of any harm or danger to anyone else either, but in everything that they do, Lord, glory to God. I pray that your representation, Lord, would be with them. That men, women, and even children will look upon them and see your good works and glorify you, our God, which is in heaven. That's my heart's desire today, that through our lives, Lord, others may get to know you too. In Jesus' name, amen.